Hey guys, Will here, welcome back to the channel. Now, as you can see beside me, we are down to the pointy end of the build now. In fact, we've only got one more pipe to install and then leak test. And if everything goes to plan, we'll be good to go. We can start installing windows, overclocking and get stuck into that stuff. But what I wanna do in this video is cover exactly how to do hard lining. So I've done most of it already. I've recorded what I've done along the way so far, but what I wanted to do is now with the experience of having done all the rest of the build, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it on this last piece of pipe. This is quite an intricate piece because it's gotta come out and then across and down. So there's two bends that are gonna be in it. And you know, obviously measuring and having the right throwback distance and everything is gonna be quite tricky. So as I've mentioned previously, there are quite a few videos already out there showing how to bend hard lines, but there's not a whole lot of information about all the other things that you need to do, like how to actually mount the fittings, how to prepare the ends of the tubing to actually insert into the fittings, things like that. There's a lot of little details there and a lot of little tips and tricks that I've learned just from making mistakes along the way to make things a lot easier. So what I wanna do in this video is really cover all the things, all the fundamentals that you're gonna to need to do the best job possible if it's your first time, as well as you know maybe a couple of tips and tricks that other people might learn from. And I'd like this to be a discussion as well. So if you've got things that you do particularly that you're doing different from me, tell me in the comments, let's talk about it, let's figure out the best way possible to get this done as quickly as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do this last pipe, and then we're gonna go back in time and I'm gonna sort of time lapse the rest of the assembly so you can see how I kind of fit everything into position. And then we can move on to filling and doing all our cable management in the next videos after that. So stick around, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, so before we get into actually bending the piping and getting it installed into our computer, there's a couple of fundamentals that we need to cover first. Now I will keep this as short and sweet as I can, but there are a couple of key points here that you need to understand before you tackle all of this. And the first thing is the equipment that you're actually gonna need. So I've kind of gone a little bit overboard here. I've got all of the right gear to get the absolute best result possible. So I've got a Thermal Tape Pacific hard tube bending kit here. Now you do need to make sure that the inside diameter and outside diameter match the tubing that you have. There are a couple of different sizes available, so just make sure you have that right. I believe it's inside of 10, outside of 12 millimeter and then the 12 and 16, which is what I've got, which is the slightly thicker stuff. So the thicker stuff is a little bit harder to work with, but I prefer the end result and the look of, that it gives in the side of the case. It's a little bit more of a full look, which I really like. So make sure you do get the right bending kit for the type of tubing that you have. So the kit comes with a couple of different mandrel bends, which you can use to get perfect bending inside your hard line. So you've got a 90 degree bend, 135 degree bend, a 180 degree bend and then a 360 degree which you can use to create you know any any range of those things so they all have pretty much the same radius which is sort of the maximum bend radius of the tubing any tighter a bend than this and you start to get kinks and stuff like that so this is a really good thing to have I think this cost me about a hundred 120 Australian dollars so it was quite expensive but that said, it's something that'll last forever, something that I'll be able to use time and time again when I do new hard linings. So it's a useful thing to have in your inventory if you're planning on doing a lot of this stuff. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is the fittings themselves. So you do need to use special compression fittings for hard lines, and these work a little bit differently to your regular compression fitting that you'd have for a soft tube. So normally a soft tube fitting, you would have a barb, you stick, the, you stick the tube onto the barb and then you put the locking ring over the top of that and that kind of locks it or compresses it on so it can't come loose. Now, hard line fittings work a little bit different because you can imagine if you have a piece of hard tube, you're not really going to be able to push it in over a barb. So the way these work is there's a little washer inside there that you can see. So the tube pushes in past that washer. Then there's another washer which sits over the top. So this washer would go on the pipe like this. That goes in and that seats there, like that. And then your compression ring goes over the top and locks down. So I haven't actually pushed that in tightly, which is why it's completely loose now. The reason I haven't pushed it in is because you can see I've got a really sharp edge where I've cut the pipe here. And we need to be very, very careful of that because what happens is if you push the pipe straight into the fitting without chamfering the edge, it will actually tear this washer here. And this washer on this on this particular fitting has actually torn. You won't be able to see it in the video, but this has actually torn just from the number of test fittings that I did, you know, just sort of adjusting and, you know, so I was kind of using this piece as my tester throughout the build. So I bought a couple of extra fittings. Now I do recommend that you do buy extra fittings if you are doing a build, just because you there's a good chance that you'll end up damaging one or you'll end up needing more than you thought you would or whatever. So 
get a couple of extra ones but basically all of these hardline compression fittings work pretty much the same way they've got an inner washer it locks in and then you screw down the top ring over the top so in order to prepare for installing the hard lines into the actual fittings you need to do what's called chamfering around the edge and what that does is it puts a nice in this case 45 degree angle and different fittings may have different chamfer um, specs so make sure you do check but for these particular fittings the EK ones they suggest a 45 degree chamfer around the edge and what that does is that greatly reduces the risk of damaging the washer inside your fitting so what we use is this tool and we simply insert the pipe like this and we just twist it trying to hold it at a nice straight angle And you're not pushing down hard, all you're doing is you're just kind of rotating it around softly. And you can see inside, there's a bunch of blades there, so be very careful you don't cut yourself. And what that's doing, is it's cutting a nice 45 degree angle on the side of the pipe there. So it does leave a bit of a rough edge. If you're using acrylic piping, it does do a better job, but with the PETG piping, it is a little bit rough, but we'll just keep going with it. Spinning it around until we've got a nice 45 degree angle like that. And then what we want to do is we want to use a piece of sandpaper and basically just go around the edge Keeping that 45 degree angle. You don't need to have a super, super, super tidy finish on it. All you need to do is just make sure that it's nice and smooth and it's not a hard edge anymore. So you can see there, we've got a really nice smooth edge that's not going to tear up our washer anymore. So what we would do, rinse this out and then we probably put a little bit of soapy water inside the fitting as well, but we push that in. And you can see now that pushes on really easily. Like so, without damaging the washer. Now the other thing that comes inside the kit as well is a pipe cutting tool. So this is a really, really handy tool to have. You can just use a hacksaw to cut this stuff, but you end up with a lot of burrs on the inside edge. And as you can see, when it's cut with the pipe cutting tool, you end up with a really clean edge on the inside here. Now, if you do end up with some burrs there, you can actually use the opposing side of the chamfer tool and tidy it up like this. Now I find with PETG tubing in particular, it actually ends up kind of burying it up a little bit more. So we simply spin the end, insert the pipe in the place that we want to cut it, spin it back up again until the blade contacts, and then we just turn it and you can see there it leaves a nice score in the pipe. And then as it starts to get loose, we just tighten it up a little bit more. A little bit more. And as you spin it, you'll feel it get looser and looser and looser. Tighten it again. And you can see it gives you a beautiful clean cut with no burrs on the inside at all. So that to me is the best way to do it. The thing is that, you know, you spend a little bit more money for tools like this, but it greatly reduces the chance of leaks and it gives you a much more consistent result as well. So I believe that it's worth a little bit of extra money to buy the correct tools for the job. So the kit comes with the pipe cutting tool, the chamfer tool, your mandrel bends, and also this little piece of silicon as well. So we won't go into a whole lot of detail about the silicon tubing right now because we will show you how to use that later on in the video when we actually get to bending stuff. But what I did want to show you is this piece here. Now this was the very first piece that I bent up and the mistake that I made was I tried to bend far too close to the end that was actually going into the fitting. And you'll see what actually happens when you do that is because you're heating up in the vicinity of the end, you actually start to distort the material very, very slightly. And it doesn't look like much, but it's enough to mean that when you try to plug it into the fitting, you don't get a nice clean edge anymore. Now that one there is not too bad, but this side, it's very, very difficult to plug into the fitting and you can actually sort of feel, feel it sort of trying to push to the side. And what happens is if you don't have a perfect circle inside there, you no longer have a good seal up against that rubber washer in there and the, the chances of having a leak are far, far greater. So I always recommend bending a little bit further away from the end of the pipe 
and then cutting it down to length later on so that you're not ending up with a distorted end. So that's a quick rundown on the tools that you're gonna to need to do this job professionally as well as how to chamfer the edges of your pipes to make the fitting into the fittings much cleaner and more trustworthy. So next we'll move on to actually getting some bending done in the case and we'll show you how that's done. Okay, so just having a good look at what we're actually dealing with here before we start. So there's a couple of different things we could do. We could come out to the distance out from the end that this is and then go straight across and down. But what will happen then is we'll have a pipe that's coming out not as far as this one. It's going to look a little bit funny inside the case. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to come straight out to the same distance as this pipe, then across, and then I'm going to go slightly back and then down. So we're going to end up with a pipe that comes out, across, kink, down, and into the fitting here. And I think that's going to look a lot cleaner from the side profile as opposed to having two different length pipes. It's going to look a little bit more planned. You can see up here these two pipes are exactly the same distance outwards from the block as each other. So it's going to look clean if I replicate that here as well. So that's the approach that we're going to be taking. So let's get stuck into it. All right, so let's grab our piece of tube out. Insert our silicon tube here for mandrel bending so that it doesn't collapse on itself. So we're just going to get some nice soapy water onto this. So what I've done is it's just a bowl of water with just a dash of straight soap. Now you don't want to use scented soap or essential oil soap or anything like that. You just want to use straight soap because you don't want anything oil based in there because that can actually break down the plastic. So we insert that in there nice and easy. And what we're going to do is going to measure the distance that we need to come out first based off the throwback distance of the fitting as well. So we've got a spare fitting here and we know that once it's plugged in it's going to go all the way basically to the bottom there give or take a millimeter or two. So we're going to add that much distance to allow for plugging in. Now we don't need to be super precise with it because what we'll do is we'll use the we'll use the mandrel bender for our 90 degree bend and then what we can do is we can actually trim the end down once we've actually cut it to get our exact distance. So it's not going to be millimeter specific here. We can actually use trimming at the end here to adjust the distance. So all we really need to do is make sure we've got enough to reach the end and then come out. So using this as a guide, we basically want to go to about there. We're probably going to end up cutting about that much off at the end, but that's fine. We've got heaps of pipe spare to work with. So we'll do it there, then we can always trim it down later on if we need to. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat up the piping. Now you want to be really careful not to get the end where it actually mounts into the um, fitting too hot because if that gets deformed at all, you're increasing your um, likelihood of a leak massively. So what I do is I hold it a little bit away from that part so my hands actually conduct the heat away from this part so it doesn't melt it. And I just kind of heat it up in the area that I'm going to actually be bending. So you'll get a feel. I usually put my heat gun on a lower setting. It depends on the heat gun that you have, obviously. And I just kind of hold it usually about this far away, but again, it depends on the amount of heat. And you heat it up and you're gonna, you're gonna wanna rotate it as you're, as you're heating as well. So the area that's actually gonna be bending around, so the long side is the area that you're gonna need to concentrate the most heat. But I just kind of go around like this, keeping it heating up nice and even. And I also slant it slightly away from the end that I'm closest to, so the heat goes that way rather than that way. Because again, I don't wanna get any heat up in this side. So. We're rotating it around. Now you will see that it starts to go a little bit floppy and starts to bend. Now don't be tempted to just jump straight away in and bend it straight away because that's what that's the mistake that a lot of people make and where I made a mistake the first few times I tried this. You need to be patient and actually get quite a bit more heat into it until it becomes almost floppy and then you can bend it really, really easily. Don't get too much heat into it because it'll start to blister but I actually haven't even managed to make it blister at all. I've, I've heated it up beyond the point where I thought I needed to and it still hasn't blistered. So again, just it depends on the tube that you're working with as well. But get be, be generous with the amount of heat that you're getting into it, but make sure that you're spreading the heat out evenly. So before we actually start heating up the tubing, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have all the tools that we need handy because things will happen pretty quickly once we get started and we don't wanna end up with a distorted piece of plastic. So we've got our mandrel bender here. I've got my pair of gloves which I'm going to wear to actually heat it up so that I don't burn myself. We don't need our soapy water at this stage, so that's all we need. So put the gloves on. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the pipe down to about here 
and then bending it around this curve. And then what we'll do is we'll trim the end off later off to get our correct throwback distance to the fitting. So have that handy there. Make sure we're heating up the side that's got the silicon in it. We don't want to heat up this side because it will collapse on itself. Put our heat gun on a nice low setting. And we're wanting to heat up basically in the area that we're going to be bending. So between there and here. So spinning it around slowly as we go. Keeping it tilted away from the end so that we don't distort that bit of plastic there. Now don't squish it either. Make sure your hands are nice and loose on it. And just rotating it around. Don't try to bend it to see if it's bendy. You'll notice it actually start to bend on its own when it's ready. You can see it's starting to bend a little bit now, but we want to keep going. Make sure you're spreading the heat around a wide enough area. That it will bend nice and cleanly. And that's starting to get pretty floppy now. A little bit more. A little bit more. I think that will do. And we get our mandrel. And we simply bend it around like that. Hold it nice and flat. And don't be tempted to move away from it. Cool it down, don't dip it in water or anything like that. You're gonna to need to hold it there for quite a long time while it sets. I'm gonna switch off our heat gun now. And don't push in on the sides because you will collapse the tubing slightly. So just hold it there while it cools down. beautiful clean mandrel bend there no kinks no distortions and perfect 90 degree bend so that's one bend done now the next thing we're going to need to do is probably actually do the I'll do the 90 degree bend downwards and then I'll put the kink in later on so that I can get get the exact measurement correct from there so when I first started doing this I was measuring everything and you know trying to be as particular as I possibly could and what I found is that it's because you're working in three dimensions, it's really hard to be accurate. And the, the tubing is sort of malleable enough that you can kind of wing it to an extent. As long as you keep it warm, you can kind of bend it slightly to get it into the position you want. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create the bend that's actually going to go down to this part. Now, because I'm going to be tilting it slightly that way, I'm going to put a slight kink in it. That's going to bring the material back slightly as well. So I'm going to go a little bit past where I would normally go to bend it and then we'll bring it down and if we need to if we need to adjust it later on we can so it's not the end of the world so we're just gonna sort of hold it in the right position roughly which we know is going to be about there and this time what we're going to be doing is holding our mandrel tool here and bending it down this way so we'll just double check that quickly Make sure we're happy with the rough position. So what I'll do is once I've heated it up, I'm actually going to hold it in this position, line things up by eye, and bend it down like that. So I'm actually going to hold it in position while I do it this time, and line it all up by eye. So what we'll do is we'll get into our right position to heat up the material, which is here. And exactly as before, this time we want to try and make sure we keep the heat away from this kink because we don't want to distort that. So, so 
starting to get bendy now. And again, just holding it in position at that 90 degrees until it's set. Don't push down on it too hard because you will distort the plastic. Just hold it in position nice and gently. Switch off your heat gun. Now I did get quite a bit of heat into it that time, so we're going to sit here for quite a while. You can see how flexible that still is while it's setting, so you just want to hold it on that mandrel as long as you can. While it cools down. Okay. So, hopefully that's just about right. We've got a little bit past so that when we kink it, it comes into alignment. So the next thing we need to do now is actually trim the plastic down to roughly the right length. So we know that we're sort of an inch or two centimeters too high here. So it's going to need to come down that far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it a little longer than I need to for now. Just so that we can get in there and measure things. And then we'll trim it shorter later on. So I'm going to pull my silicon strip back a little bit. Like so and get my cutting tool and you can see that it's come straight off very very easy and it gives you a really nice clean cut that doesn't need too much cleaning up afterwards just need to prepare the edge so we'll set that bit of tube aside we're not going to be using that right now and we'll leave our silicon tube in there because we are still going to be doing a little bit more bending yet and what we're going to do is just have a look and see roughly how things are playing out so that's looking really good now so what I need to do now is put my little kink in the top part here so I'm going to focus the heating mostly on this side here because that's the part that's going to be stretching and just a little bit there so I'm kind of going to be working in here like this all we're going to do is just slightly kink it by hand we do actually have a 135 degree bend here that we could use but it's probably going to be a little bit more tricky than it's worth to do that so I'm just going to do it by hand being very very careful not to squish the material with my fingers so we're just curving it very 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 gently and we will probably need to adjust this slightly to compensate for the amount of bend but the throwback distance as I mentioned is about the width of a fitting so we only need to bring it back you know sort of maybe on a yeah say probably about a 30 to 45 degree angle so let's do that now need to get so much heat into it this time because we're only bending it a little bit
that should be enough I think. So you can see I didn't put nearly as much heat in that time when I did that bend just because I was only bending it a little bit and I didn't want to throw these two out of alignment. So there is quite a bit of flex there, which will be quite forgiving when we actually do things. So once we place that into position, that's going to come out nicely in line with this pipe and then it's going to go back and curve towards the fitting. So we can see now when we line it up by eye, that is perfectly aligned there and that is just about perfectly aligned there too by the looks of things. Now one thing I have noticed is that there's a slight slant downwards now and that's going to put pressure on the fitting here when I mount it. So what I'm going to do is heat it up again just slightly and just twist it up so that that is a perfect 90 degree angle like that. So we'll probably, we'll do the twist here I think. So we'll heat up in this general area and we're just going to kink it so that it's sitting up at exactly 90 degrees. So again not too much heat. So that's all we needed to get it. And that is sitting beautifully now. Perfect, so just be very attentive to things like that. Don't rush ahead and assume that because you've already bent it, it's all gonna be correct. Just take your time, look at it 16 times, make sure everything's happy and then move on to the next step. So. Now I think we're probably safe to pull out our silicon tubing. Set that aside, we can take our gloves off too, thank God. Never thought I'd wear these again, I stopped riding motorbikes about 15 years ago. Alright, so, my hands are a bit shaky from reaching at arm's length, but that is how we're looking, which is great. So. Now what we need to do is measure how much distance we're going to actually need to cut off the ends. So to measure that, we're going to put it in this fitting here, mark the end of the fitting, so here, and then add the distance that we know it's going to plug in to the end of the fitting. So we know it's going to go in that far, so here. So we're only actually cutting off about a centimetre there. So we'll grab our pipe cutting tool again. And I'm just going to double check it, make sure I'm absolutely spot on. Now make sure when you do this that you are holding the pipe square. Because if you're like that, or like that, or tilted forward or backwards even more so, it's going to throw out your measurements. So make sure your pipe is sitting in there cleanly. Don't push it in because you will damage the fitting. And again, we're just going straight up from the fitting. And then adding the throwback distance on top of that, so to there. So we can actually measure that, so it's 13, 16 millimetres exactly that we're wanting to trim off. So when I'm done, the piece that I've cut off should be 16 millimetres, or very close to, so it's a little bit tricky, but line that up there and just measure the distance between the blade and the edge, 16 millimeters. So, remember not making it too tight, spin it around. And I go hitting that bowl again. There we go. This one's off. And if we did it correctly, that piece should be 16 millimeters. Let's have a look. Beautiful. All right. So now we have our distance back to the fitting correct, and that looks like it's lining up absolutely perfectly. So now we just need to trim the height away. So we need to measure the distance between the base of this fitting to the base of the pipe. So the inner circle to the base of the pipe. This is where it gets tricky because you can't really get stuff in there to measure very well. So what I normally do is I grab another piece of tubing, 
hold on to it in the right spot and then measure it afterwards. So to the bottom of that fitting there and making sure again that we've got our pipe sitting straight and not slanted because obviously if we slant it, it moves up and down. So very, very straight. You could actually prepare this edge and put it into the fitting if you're really pedantic, but I'm trying to minimize the number of times I plug in and plug out from these because the inner washers do actually wear out over time. Make sure we're as square as possible. And you can also look at the baseline to see where it's straight as well. Go like that to the base of the fitting. And from the tip of my thumb to the end of the pipe is the distance that we want to trim off the bottom. So 39 millimeters. So with that 39 millimeter measurement in place, what I'm going to do is just double check it and make sure it looks roughly correct. So if I cut off 39 millimeters, it's going to take me to there which will take me to there. Now, if we do fudge it up a little bit, we can twist or manipulate this bend here a little bit more to make it work. But that all said and done, I think that we're gonna be okay. So, thirty-nine millimeters, and then blade to the pipe. All right. So once more. So if all's well and good, we should have exactly the right length. Everything should fit perfectly now, so... That is looking pretty darn good to me. Put that in there. And that is going to go back to there. So the next thing we need to do, we may need to do some slight manipulation once we've test fitted it. But the next thing we're going to do is prepare the edges to actually install into our fittings. Okay, so we've rinsed out our pipe. We've got our beautiful 45 degree chamfer there with a nice clean edge as well. So there's no messiness or burrs or anything like that to speak of. So it's a little bit tricky to get into position because you're going to kind of, you don't have anything that you can move in this case. So we're just going to have to kind of work it into position. So what I'll probably do is pop that one in first and then kind of twist it around into position. Now, because it's nice and long, there is a bit of give in it. If you do have a piece of pipe that's got a fitting on it that twists, this is a lot easier to do, but I wanted to try and keep this as minimalistic as possible. So what we want to do is put some soapy water just in the fittings themselves. So dip your finger in your soapy water that you used before and just kind of lubricate the fitting there and do exactly the same thing on your graphics card or whichever fitting you're going to as well. Now this is really, really important because if you don't do this, there's a lot more risk of damaging the inner washer. Then we want to put our locking ring over with our washer as well. Don't forget the washer on both sides. Now one thing I have noticed is that the washer, these locking rings do actually scratch the piping really easily. So try not to move them around too much and try to just sort of be as careful as you can with them. Then we want to do the same thing again. We want to lubricate these bits of pipe as well. Put a soapy water on them. And just push everything into position. So, we'll start off with this one. Slide this one on as well. Get that in there. And you'll hear it sort of click in. So that was relatively easy and it sort of pops in and then you just slide your locking ring down and we're not going to tighten it up just yet just in case there's any issues same thing with this one just push it down pops into position and we tighten it all down make sure it's nice and tight that's as far as we can go it's a shame those fittings don't quite line up in their um, logos but that's just my OCD talking we might be able to adjust that a little bit later on but you can see there that pipe fits perfectly. I'll just take the camera off so you can have a good look. So they're sticking out the same distance here. Then it kind of curves back 
and lines up with the fitting. So everything looks really clean and purposeful. This is awesome because this is what it actually looks like finished. All we got to do now is just finish off the cable management and leak test and we are done. Okay guys, so that is my rundown on how to do hard lines with PETG tubing. Now obviously the methods are a little bit different with some of the other types of tubing that are out there, so make sure you check out and read up. Don't just follow these instructions and rush into it. Make sure you do your research, make sure you are using the same stuff that I am if you're gonna follow my exact instructions. But a lot of the a lot of the basic principles around how the fittings work and you know how to handle the tubing and things like that do apply across the board. So hopefully you've picked up some useful tips and tricks. But as you can see beside me, we're pretty much done now. All we need to do is do the final leak testing, finish off some cable management, and then obviously hope and pray that we don't have any DOA parts or anything like that and that everything works the way it's meant to. So stick around the next video, I'm gonna show you how to prepare and start doing some leak testing, including a little tip that I came up with to allow you to actually do a leak test without adding any water to the computer, which is a really cool thing to do because it means minimizing the risk of leaks, of course. So check that out as well, that'll be the next video. Then we'll move on to cable management and actually filling up the computer as well. So stick around, thank you very much for watching. If you've liked the video, do hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well so you don't miss the next one and the notification button and I'll see you in the next video, bye.